Hey guys, Sierra Bailey here with Excel Commercial Real Estate. The video you're watching ties into our event in June, Accelerate. If you want to learn more about what you see today, scan the QR code on your screen or click the link in the description to get your tickets now before early bird pricing runs out. Enjoy the video. Uh, one of my um, points to you guys is, is it, it's also if, if you pick one thing on your property and you just target that one thing, and this would be whether you're managing it or specifically if you've got a property manager, and this is huge for them. And you just say, hey, just pick out one thing and we're going to really work on that one thing. Like, uh, and since Terry's here, I, I'd already mentioned him before talking, uh, I've met Terry before and, and talked to, with him about dumpsters, but there's a lot of other different one things. And here's my point is like, when you target one thing and say like, okay, we're going to have the cleanest dumpsters possible. I'm not saying the cleanest property, that's too broad. You need to be a really specific and let's just say just dumpsters. So therefore on dumpsters is every time you see a mattress sitting there by the dumpster, you need to go back in and on the recording and find the person who did that. The majority of the time, it's someone that lives there. You cannot believe how many properties tell me it's someone else is dumping there. And it's like, it's like okay, every property I go to, it says someone else is dumping there. It's like, well, then where's the people that are living on your property? So they're, people that are living on your property are dumping on their property. But I was just there and they're saying it was you all that are dumping on their property. So it, it's, and no, the majority of the time it's someone that's living there, they're moving out, they got a new mattress, they just throw it over there and they're gone. But as a property owner, the, the, the waste management isn't going to pick up that mattress. So you, and you actually can't really throw it in, they're not supposed to take it. You're supposed to take it yourself and uh, to a landfill that will accept mattresses. So it becomes a hassle. So people just don't do it. So they just throw it. Well, the point would be is picking that one thing and, and making sure that they know that, look, if you leave the mattress there, we're going to charge you 150 bucks. Um, you know, so if you're not going to sleep on that mattress tonight, then you need to pay us 150 bucks and we'll move it ourselves. But now at least you're covering your costs. Then you start looking for positives, like when you see someone who puts trash in. And here's where it becomes easy, is you have a property manager. They're sitting there doing their job. They're in front of their computer. They begin putting a new tenant. And on a second monitor, they have a shot just of the dumpster or dumpsters. So they see Joe go out there. And maybe Joe actually picks up a cup because it's laying there and puts it up. That is a perfect opportunity to say, thanks, Jim. And these things can be, is that my phone? Yeah. These things can be done extremely easy when you have the proper thing. So here's my cameras right this second. This is actually my office. So if I, if I double click on that, I just blew up it. All I got to do, and this is other software, so this doesn't have to be my company. But I hit this button, and what I just did is I go to photos and right there it is. So I just took a picture of it, got in my photos, and now I just send it. And most properties have everyone's cell phones. Send it to them and just say, hey, thanks for picking up that cup. You know, by doing that little thing, it's just like, wow, the attention to detail. So um, I was telling Janet, uh, Paul, O'Neill, he was the CEO, and if some of you guys have read the book uh, uh, Power of Habit, he was the CEO of Alcoa. He came in in 1987 when Alcoa was really struggling, and his first board meeting from all of the, all of the board members was, we're going to be number one in safety, and this was at a point where they were having strikes, 
The employees were, I mean, hated working there. They, uh, they were having all kinds of, they were having injuries and a lot of people were getting killed because of the products. But, but there was a whole bunch of bad things going on. They weren't profitable. They were, you know, and so there was safety. You want to be number one in safety? It's like, really? So the board members, when they left that, that initial meeting, they went out and said, sell the stocks. They're, they're going, we're going under. You know, you, you want to sell and get out right now. And if you had, taken the majority of the board members advice you would have lost five times what the stock was worth they um, they wound up when he left in 2000 they were five times more net profitable than when he first got there the turnaround from taking one thing and creating a positive habit of just targeting safety and what that did is it it flows over into other areas and it wound up making the company more profitable. So that's what I'm really saying about the dumpsters is when you, your property manager is really saying like, hey, you got, you know, we got to keep this place cleaner. We are the dumpsters cleaner. And you show that you're grateful when people pick up and you're on it. When someone does really been the, you know, does a, a major, you know, leaves a big sofa there you've got to let them know they've got to move it. And by doing that, that will make them start looking, oh, hey, there's a camera over there by the pool. Huh, well, they're using them. They told me about the dumpster, about me you know, picking up some trash the other day. So that means I probably couldn't climb over the fence and have a pool party tonight. See, it starts making the awareness of every other camera and the property manager in general, they're like, yeah, but the girl that's a girl or a guy that's the property manager, they're, they're all over it. You know, I'm not going to do that because they're, you know, they're really managing this place. They're really looking out for your all's assets. And that's what prevents the frivolous lawsuits, you know, someone slipping and falling because they also realize once again that you guys are really watching your assets. Does that make sense? So when Brian and I were first married, I kind of think of this as a um, Brian, not uh, Brian. Right. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Brian and I were first married. Um, we were young and poor, of course, and my security system was that I went out and bought two really big dog bowls and a chain and a big beware of dog sign. And then I put the chain so and I and I would drag it and I would put it so that it came up basically to the back porch. And um, so that if anybody came into our backyard, they would see that there was a dog and that it was a big dog. And that was my version of it. Um, so that was my version of it, um, of my personal home safety. Yeah. <laughs> but with um, the reason why I'm saying that is I've had people say, well, we, should, we can have, you know, 50% of them are real, 50% of them are fake. What is your opinion about that? So if you, let's say you have 10 cameras, is there a safe percentage or are you opening yourself up for lawsuits or right. talk to me about, you know, cause there's, right. what, what would be a potential liability having cameras maybe? That's a great, great question. It's something that you guys really should be aware of. So um, uh, Walmart created this in court. So this precedence was set over 20 years ago and it wasn't in Tennessee, but this is, this case is what will always come back on liability. A girl got raped in a Walmart parking lot by two guys. And so after the rape was over, she was like, you know, hey, let's get the footage and let's, you know, let's catch these guys. And then Walmart was like, well, you know, and this is back when you, these big housings that you used to see at banks, you know, that had the house, the cameras. So you could see them all across the Walmart rooftop. And the Walmart was like, well, those are all dummy cameras. And so she got a lawyer and the lawyer sued them for presenting security that she, that she thought they had that they didn't. Because she, her lawyer also went on to say, well, she would have fought off. She would have run but she let it happen there because you have security where if she ran off and got in the bushes or something, trying to get away from them and being off the security cameras, then she would have gotten raped off camera and you wouldn't have had all the evidence, but you were presenting security that you didn't have. 
So they lost a major lawsuit. And that's what created that precedent. So when you have cameras, and this is not just public, but private also, parking lots, they got to be real. So on that same line, so you and I've had a conversation before about monitoring your cameras. Because... Mm -hmm. I, I know friends who go to Costco and buy the Costco package and they throw the cameras up and they're live cameras, but they don't know what to do with them afterwards. So I think maybe could you talk a little bit more about whether, you know, you recommend having an external or third party monitoring company um, or is it okay, maybe some best practices on, you know, okay, so you spent the money, you've got the cameras, now what the uh so one word monitoring is is not a not necessarily a good word the for liabilities okay. so uh like pools a lot of times i'll get this pushback where we don't want a camera on the pool like why don't you want a camera on the pool? well because the liability is like, <laughs> the camera is not your liability the pool is your liability silly the sidewalk is your liability the uh but the wording if you were to put up a sign that says, you know, the, the pool's being monitored and someone's not, because monitored means someone's watching and it indicates someone's watching all the time. You know, you don't have to say monitoring 24 hours. You, just by using the word monitor means someone could be watching. And if they're not, then you're opening back, in, back, back to the into, Walmart. Yes, scenario. same thing. So what should it say? It should say recording. Say so you're recording all of our signs that recording video and audio. That was worth the price of admission, isn't it? So, to know the difference between those two words. Yeah, <laughs> big, that was big. that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The uh, so therefore, if you're recording, that's fun. Okay, there's also an applied consent law that means that you when you when you have a camera out where you can see it, then you've given your consent to be recorded. That doesn't mean marketed or sold where someone's making money off of you. It means you've given your consent just to be recorded, to be on camera, because you can see the camera, so therefore you can leave. I don't know why I see it's over there, so I'm not going to. I'm out of here. Well, I'm out of here. Okay, so that covers pretty much everything. That's also why you don't hide cameras. When you hide cameras, now you're starting to get into a very gray area. That's and, that, and that doesn't prevent anything. So that means you're trying to catch something and that's sneaky and that's the, the, the way that cameras are more effective is like we were originally talking is, is using them but use them in a good way catching people doing things right so then you don't have to catch them doing things wrong just say hey you know charlie i see that you got here do you if you've got a community that you know that you're not going to be there all the time you know how cool it is to be able to slowly get to know people because you're watching and then slowly over time, uh, when you're on the property, you meet them and say, hey, I saw you the other day. And you start exchanging, you build a relationship. Then you get to the point where you start texting them, oh, I see, you know, you, know, I, I, you look nice. Or are you going out on, you know, on a big, big night tonight, hot date or something? If you do it in, in non creepy way, okay. <laughs> so, okay, Ryan. <laughs> it's on Saturday. You need to know the person. You want to promote the Yeah. Well, there's a my my son and his wife live in a um, an apartment complex here that will remain nameless, but they have a dog park in their complex. But the people um, they are allowing their dogs to leave dog bombs everywhere, and so they install the cameras. So because they basically created a rule that said if you leave your dog bombs then we reserve the right to interview your dog you know which essentially means we'll match the dog to the to the dog on camera and you will they will kick them out yeah. for you know like there's like no tolerance of yeah. that and then and it stopped the dog bombs from happening because they could show that they had evidence of this was your dog you know, clear evidence that they, that dog yeah, was doing. Even it. Send it, you know, the doo doo DNA. That's actually what they did. <laughs> that 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 was the. And if you wanna, and if you wanna fight it, we will. Yeah. Well, there is a doo doo DNA yeah. company. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. They so, they they they've got it. 
once you retain register your dog, you just give your dog's DNA, and then bam, they see a doo doo sitting there, and just go. You gotta take, you know, stick like a you know toothpick in it, and then you send it off. When it comes back, it'll say whose dog it is. And, and there's like no tolerance because they ha- it was such a problem that because they were doing it everywhere on the grass and this was a, this is an expensive apartment complex and they were like we're we're not going to be a poop fest you know and, yeah. and that, it, it was a value issue for people coming to see the to, you know new tenants don't want to be there because yeah. everywhere they look there's and even with that doo-doo. even going to the point of the the, the dna you still need a camera because see then you're going to get someone who gets burned and then, so what does a burn person want to do? They want to mess with your system. So they'll even bring poop in and put it down and go, all right, DNA that. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, so you <laughs> will DNA. True. You will, and That's you'll wind up, <laughs> and you'll wind up paying for it and you don't have anyone to pay for it because that dog doesn't live here and it really wasn't done there. You know, yeah, and, and and it's yeah. the same thing like with a security guard. It's like you know, it's so often you need a you need a camera to watch the security guard. Yeah, you because know, well, they'll be sleeping. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what you see, be sure to follow our generational wealth learning series. On Select Thursdays, we offer cutting edge industry information that would normally cost thousands of dollars. And the best part, our education is absolutely free. If you register through our events page, you can join us live, either in person or over Zoom. In the meantime, like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a beat.